Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing our how to swap an LS series on our 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. So today's video is going to comprise of taking the transmission out and uh, refreshing the firewall's paint job a little bit. Now if you are going to leave your transmission, you're fortunate enough to have a car where you can just you know, button your LS up to the transmission that came in it. Maybe you already have a Turbo 350 or a Turbo 400 or a 4L80E or something like that. Um, then you can just, you know, bolt your LS right up to it and you're made in the shade. But we're really not going to do that on this project and I want to be as thorough as possible. And honestly, it's a good idea to at least take your old transmission out and have it rebuilt, especially if the <laughs> transmission is old and was only really designed to handle 140 horsepower or so, and you go putting 500 or more in it, you're gonna break it pretty quick, so why not just do it now when it's nice and easy? Before we go any further, I have to mention we are sponsored by Summit Racing. They're an absolutely amazing sponsor. This series would not be happening without Summit's amazing support, so go ahead and buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. With all that out of the way, let's jump in. So here's our beautiful 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. We're gonna come underneath it and show you where we're working today. We're going to work on getting this transmission out, but our first job today is to remove this linkage, speed cable, drive shaft. So let's get started. So on our particular transmission, you can see there's a bunch of different places uh, to undo the linkage. They're all fine. I think this one's going to be the cleanest though, because once we remove it, we can swing the linkage out of the way and not worry about it. So our particular instance looks like there's just a little hairpin. We just remove it <laughs> ridiculously easy. Remove the washer. And then we're just going to push the linkage out of its home and up and out of the way. The next thing we can do is remove our speedometer cable. Um, usually you're going to have to use a pair of channel locks, at least to break it loose. And we can just spin it off with our fingers and remove that bad boy and set it aside. So the next thing we can do is remove our transmission cooler lines. Um, if you are you know, going to a whole new transmission and you don't need these lines, um, you kind of really have to care about them, but it is going to make it easier and less messy. And what we can do is grab a 916 wrench to hold our fitting and then a half inch wrench, line wrench, to undo our line and have a catch basin ready as well as some eye protection, ATF in your eye does burn really badly. So typically once you've broken it loose, you can just grab a regular half inch, open end wrench. It's a little bit easier to work with. Here comes some fluid, totally normal. Ah, catch basin. So then we can remove our transmission cooler line from the vehicle. And for us, we're actually gonna be tossing these lines because we're going to be replacing the transmission with a different one. Um, but if you are going to be replacing the transmission with the exact same one, with the coolers in the same spot, hold on to this line. It's nice to just have them, especially if they don't leak, and do the same thing for the other transmission cooler line as well. It's exactly the same. So now I'm at the back of the drive shaft where it connects to the pinion yoke of the differential, and what I can do is take a, a medium-sized standard screwdriver and I'm going to put it through the yoke just to hold it in place, because if you try turning it without this, the thing is just going to turn and be all loosey-goosey. So, you can see these nuts on the back of these drive shaft need to come off. There's four of them total, and they have little, little hoops that secure it to the pinion. So we can go ahead and remove those nuts. Usually they're not on crazy tight, but if, you, if there's like a bunch of gunk or road grime or anything, uh, go ahead and hit them with some WD-40 or penetrating fluid to help you out. And sometimes they might be in a little bit of an awkward angle. Try turning the drive shaft so you have a better access. See, this one's a little awkward for me. So I'm turning it just so I can get my fingers in there a little easier. All right, all four of our nuts have been removed and now we can remove our drive shaft. So now we can remove the hoops that hold uh, the U-joint to the pinion and those usually just kind of wiggle off. And again, see how it's kind of bound up right there? What we can do is just rotate our drive shaft until it comes off. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. Sometimes these, these can be a little sticky, so they might require a little bit of persuasion. Mine came off pretty easy, that's nice. Sometimes these U-joints, I can already tell this one's already loosey-goosey, but sometimes they're a little stick, stucky, a little stuck in there, so maybe grab a screwdriver and just kind of pry it in place. It'll actually go forward into the transmission a little bit, 
and then you'll be able to remove it. So I'm pushing it forward towards the transmission. It's nice and cleared, and now it can come out. So on these drive shafts, and this applies to drive shafts with your joints, uh, these caps contain needle bearings and grease, and they, they can fall off really easily. So what we like to do is get some tape and wrap it around there so that can't happen. Trust me, that right there will save you some serious headaches in the future. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the drive shaft uh, yoke from the back of the transmission. And sometimes, actually most of the time, uh, transmission fluid will leak out of the back of the transmission. So make sure you have a catch pan ready. So we can go ahead and pull our drive shaft out. Oh, see, there's leaking. Awesome. Okay, so now we can negotiate our drive shaft out of its home and away. So on the snout of the transmission here, what you can do is grab a zip lock, put it around, zip tie it real tight, and any drippies that come down will be caught, won't make a big mess. I happen to have this really cool transmission plug that I think is gonna work for us. Awesome. So now it's kind of a cool moment. We get to bring in our transmission jack. Now, I obviously have a two post lift, so I have a transmission jack accordingly, but they do make jacks for floor jack applications. And I'm pretty sure you can rent them at O'Reilly's or AutoZone or any auto parts store for either free or very inexpensive. And you'll be able to do the exact same thing on the ground. So our transmission jack is in place. You might notice I have this little block of wood and that is because our transmission kind of has a little step up here. So I'm compensating for that with a little block of wood and we can jack our transmission jack up. Until it takes a little bit of the weight off of the uh, transmission mounts, and then we can prep it for removal. So I've also adjusted these holders in their place so it's kind of encapsulating the transmission a little bit before I put the chain around. So the other thing too I'm doing is I'm adjusting these handles because what these do is change the pitch and yaw of the transmission plate. And I just want to keep this as level and snug as possible. That way the thing is uh, secure as can be when we're bringing it down. So next thing we can do is take our transmission chain and loop it around the top of our transmission. Just feed it through. Make sure it goes up and over to the other side. So here we are at the front of our transmission. Here's our torque converter. And what's kind of cool is this, the way we've mounted it is the, so the chain will help keep the torque converter in its home so it doesn't fall out while we're uh, manipulating it. What we can do is pull the chain nice and taut, making sure it's not caught in anything. Get the adjuster up and into a chain link and then twist the wing nut until it's really snug. Doesn't need to be Hulk tight, but it needs to be pretty darn snug. Oh, that's pretty good. So here are transmission mounts. Uh, this car is a little bit different, as I've been saying. It's quite old, so they mounted it on basically midway on the transmission. Usually they're on the back, like in the muscle car era, like on my Camaro, the transmission mount is located in the back of the transmission, so you would have had to support it um, after you took the engine out, but this one's a little bit different, um, but they should come out more or less the same. Ours are held in with two 916 bolts on each side. Let me just buzz those off. So this is why I took tension off of the transmission. I took the weight off of it and put it on the jack, so that way our bolts slide out super easy. Again, super easy. Now the other mount is exactly the same, just these two bolts, so go ahead and do that for the other side. Okay, so a little bit of a speed bump here. We noticed on the back of our transmission, it actually won't come down once we took uh, these bolts off of the frame um, because it's held in with these 5 8 bolts and it kind of just sits in its home and that whole bracket kind of has to come off, but all the weight is already being supported by the transmission jack. So we can remove those 5 8 bolts. Ooh. There we go. And then this whole mount can just come right off. Sweet, do that for both sides. All right, our transmission is nice and free and it is ready to be let down very slowly. Be careful, double check, look around, make sure you have everything disconnected. And then we can just start slowly. Slowly, kind of guide it down, watch the dip tube, watch the linkage, watch the any kind of uh, remaining lines.
Maybe walk it forward a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, this is looking great. So once we're clear, we can go ahead and remove this transmission, keeping an eye on everything. Lower it all the way down. Once it clears the car, we can wheel it out of the way. So now we can move our transmission away from our car. So the next thing we're gonna focus on today is making our firewall look pristine. There's a bunch of dirt on it. There's some things in the way. I also think I want to paint it today. And I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that. But the first thing we need to do is take off this wiper motor. So every windshield wiper motor might look a little different, but they're basically gonna have um, two things that go to it. The actual electricity that powers the motor and whatever controls it, whether that's a couple wires or a plug. A lot of the time they're just a plug and you can just unplug them and then unbolt them and you're good. This one's a little old school, so it looks like it's got a cable. So we can loosen that and remove that, move that out of the way. And actually removing your windshield wiper motor is going to make it a lot easier for you to kind of finesse the engine in a lot of the time. Sometimes not though, it's just gonna depend on your application. So the next we can remove the uh, mounting bolts for the wiper motor. Now uh, mine happen to be 516s, so yours might be different. There's usually two holding them in. So as we remove the last bolt, go ahead and support the wiper motor. And it looks like this is just held on with one wire. I kind of thought it'd have a plug, but no such luck. That's okay. So directly to the right of our wiper motor is a power junction block, and we can just remove the power going to it. And there we go. Tighten that back up so I don't lose it. Perfect. And actually while I'm on this junction block, I'm just gonna remove this entirely from the car because I think with it out of the way, it's going to make uh, painting the firewall a lot easier and cleaner. And there we go. And with our wiper motor disconnected, we can go ahead and remove it from the vehicle. Now, if you're doing a full on resto and you're replacing everything, you're replacing the master cylinder, you're replacing the heater core, you're replacing the fan motor, um, go ahead and remove all those things at this point so that way your uh, paint job will be a lot easier and uh, look really spiffy, but this is uh, just an engine swap. We're not doing a full resto mod on this car. I just thought painting the firewall was a good idea. Um, so if you're going my route, go ahead and just get all the wiring out of your way. And we can just kind of put that down like this. You just want everything off of the firewall and we're going to tape all this up. So that way it's protected from spray. I'm not gonna remove it. Um, and that applies to pretty much everything else you wanna get out of the way. I'm gonna leave my heater core hoses intact. And the reason I'm doing that is because I do not know how old that heater core is. If I try to remove these hoses, I have a really strong possibility of cracking the heater core. So those hoses are gonna stay for right now. Feel free to remove them. You can run that risk if you like. Um, and say it applies to everything else on the firewall. This paint job is going to be as good as you make it. But uh, a quick respray, definitely something I encourage. It'll really like, make your uh, LS swap look like a million bucks. So what we can do now is either with a garden hose and a sponge or something, uh, we're just gonna hose this down. This is 409. And we're just gonna get this as clean as we can. Might take a while, but if you do do the garden hose route with like a detergent or something, just make sure it's completely dry. And once it is dry, and nice and clean, no dirt remaining, just do the best you can. Um, then we're going to need to hit it with some either carburetor spray or mineral spirits. So let me get this firewall nice and clean and we can move on. All right, after I have uh, scrubbed and hosed down this area, it kind of looks like there's some dirt remaining, but this is like beige paint or something. Um, I swear it looks just like dirt in person, but I can't rub, seem to rub it off. I'm gonna try it with some carb spray here. Okay, so that's just taking paint off altogether, which I'm okay with. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to clean off all of the grease that is on here from the old sludge motor. And it's okay if some of the old paint, old gross paint comes off like it is here with this carburetor spray. That's fine, I'm totally okay with that. I'd rather the paint come off and it uh, expose clean metal, then leave grease on there. You can also use uh, mineral spirits if you don't want to tear it up. Just make sure you don't get any on the paint you intend to keep. 
So just hit the entire firewall and clean it off with some carburetor spray or some mineral spirits and we can move on to the next step. Now that area is all nice and wiped down, it's free of grease, it is just paint sitting there. What I'm going to do next is use this product. They are made by 3M, they're heavy duty stripping pads. They look like this. You can also use like red scotch bright. Uh, usually you don't want to use like the backside of a sponge or anything because it really doesn't, it's really not strong enough. You want something a little more robust. This is actually designed to take off paint and stuff, um, but we're not going to do that today. What all we're going to do is we're just going to scrape it up. So I'll do a little bit. Only scrape surfaces you want to paint, obviously. So we're just going to scratch that up a little bit. And what this is doing, these little abrasions we're making, that's giving the paint a little bit of what's called a tooth. So that way the paint can actually get in there and fit in there and essentially make more surface area for the paint to be on and make it a little more level of a surface. It'll end up looking a lot nicer. But I seriously doubt you want to watch me scratch this thing up for 20, 30 minutes. So. I'll go ahead and cut to when it's done. So now my firewall is nice and scuffed up. There's a dust residue that's been left behind, so I'm gonna take some compressed air. And blow all that dust away. I'm actually pulling down my respirator to speak right now. If you suspect that your car might have lead-based paint on it, go ahead and wear a respirator. You don't wanna breathe lead in. If you don't think you've gotten all the dust off there, you can hose it off again or just wipe it down with a towel again. It's a teeny bit, but not bad. I'll just give this a quick wipe down. So now that all of my dust has been uh, wiped away, it's nice and dust free. Go ahead and wipe on that, it's totally good. I have taped up the little bit of wiring harness that's coming out of there that I don't want necessarily painted black. And then I've also taped up my heater core lines that I don't want to remove. Now, if you were doing a full resto, you would obviously pull everything off the firewall, take it down to bare metal, apply primer, then apply paint with a professional paint gun. But we're just doing a refresh here. Don't think too much into it. I promise it'll turn out pretty good. So I have my uh, firewall area taped off. I really like using one piece of tape for the top here. So it's one continuous nice line. So you get that nice hard edge on where the uh, inside of the firewall should end. Make sure you have everything taped off. I like putting paper on the glass too. That way, uh, you know, you don't end up with little black flecks on your windscreen. Now remember, go slow and take your time. It's going to be as good as you want it to be. So there are a lot of paint products out there. I like this one made by Rust-Oleum. It's a high performance enamel in matte black. You can pick gloss black. Some people like gloss black just because uh, they claim it's easier to clean. I prefer matte. I think it's a better look. Now, if you wanted to go hardcore and grab a paint gun, you're certainly welcome to. I encourage it, in fact, if you have the means and know-how. But I understand that that is an expensive, uh, big ask out of uh, the average person. However, a link down below in the description to this great stuff is uh, there for you. Uh, I really like this stuff. You don't really need a primer. You just need a tooth like we've given it and don't wipe it down like we have. So painting is a little bit well, like art, and a lot of people have different methodologies on why they like to do different things. What I like to do is just give it a couple quick blasts, and I'm just laying down a really thin layer of the stuff. And I'm gonna let that dry for about maybe 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put another layer on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the firewall. When you're painting, make sure to wear a respirator or Make sure to wear a respirator and be somewhere uh, well ventilated. Even outside is not a bad option. Just don't do it in direct sunlight. Okay, so now that my tack coat is uh, pretty much dry, it is dry actually, uh, it's been about 30 minutes or so. Now I can lay on, I'm just going to do two coats and I'm going to lay this coat on a little bit thicker, but not like gloppy. Don't have any runs, okay? That looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna wait until it's completely dry and I'm gonna shoot the rest of the firewall. And then I like to remove uh, our tape, our masking tape, when the paint is still a little wet but not dripping. Just because if you wait until it's dry, there's a good chance that any of the paint that's on the, the tape and then also where you want the paint to be will chip off. 
So you just want to be really careful when you're removing this tape. And I've always found it helpful to kind of peel back at an angle like this. Look that paper, we don't need that anymore. And then for the big reveal. So just pull it up like this. You don't want to go too fast either. This is what you want to do when the paint's a little bit wet. So that way, sometimes when you lift it up, the paint comes with it and then kind of removes the whole point of paint. And I found it helpful if you just pull like this away from your painted surface and then you get that nice crisp line and it looks really nice. So here's a nice zoom in of uh, where our firewall meets the top of our cowl and I really like that line. It looks nice and crisp exactly the way you want it to. This, <laughs> this finish is so matte that it's hard to see the finished results. It looks absolutely amazing. You could put more coats on. You could certainly go for three coats, but I think two is completely sufficient. Um, don't worry, this spot right here will dry and match the rest of it. That's the, actually the very last spot I sprayed, so it'll look more like this over here when it is done drying, which it will be done in just a few hours. That product actually looks really nice. So that's how to remove your transmission and refresh your firewall, kind of getting things ready for the big moment where we actually put our engine into our Bel Air, but we do have to do quite a bit of prep work before we get there. And that's what this episode was basically about. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future updates on our LS Swap or any of our other repairs that are coming out every Saturday at 10 a.m. PST. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.